Dear audience, welcome back to our channel. The C919 as China's first domestically developed jetliner meeting international standards marks a new stage for China's aviation industry. However, behind its journey, China has experienced numerous attempts and collaborations, from the Yun 10 to the MD82 project, each posing challenges in technology and international cooperation. The success of the C919 has sparked contemplation on China's aviation industry development and international competitiveness. Why has China not succeeded in developing large aircraft before the C919? What does the success of the C919 mean for China's aviation industry? Does it signify China standing among the world's top players? How will China's aviation industry face challenges and competition in the future? These questions not only concern the development of China's aviation industry, but also relate to the enhancement of China's technological prowess and international competitiveness. The C919 is China's first domestically developed jetliner meeting international standards. Recently, the fifth C919 officially entered service, accelerating the mass production of domestically produced large aircraft. The C919 is China's first domestically developed jetliner meeting international standards. In the past year, four have been delivered to China Eastern Airlines, with the fifth joining the fleet just now. The stability of the C919 is excellent. It was put into commercial use in May last year and has since flown nearly a thousand commercial flights. Recently, the C919 returned from the Singapore International Airshow and flew a flight from Shanghai to Chengdu on the same day. Before the C919, only the United States, Russia, and France could manufacture large civilian aircraft worldwide. It's worth noting that there are only three countries capable of producing large aircraft, compared to nine capable of producing nuclear weapons, highlighting the technological challenges of large aircraft. Due to these technological barriers, the market for civilian aircraft worth trillions of dollars annually has been monopolized by Airbus and Boeing, leaving China wondering why it hadn't successfully developed large aircraft before the C919. What significance does the success of domestically produced large aircraft hold for the domestic and international markets? Half a century ago, China dreamed of domestically produced large aircraft. In 1968, based on the Soviet medium-sized jet bomber Tu-16, China successfully developed its domestically produced bomber, the H-6. China's aviation attack fleet faced skepticism so it decided to seize the opportunity to develop a jetliner while the iron was hot. That was the domestically produced large aircraft. It was decided. In August 1970, the domestically produced large aircraft project, codenamed Yun-10, landed in Shanghai and officially commenced development. Switzerland assembled the cream of the crop in China's aircraft design field at the time, with chief project designer Ma Fengshan, design team leader Xiong Yang, and Deputy Chief Designer Cheng Bushi. Additionally, many technical elites from across the country gathered in Shanghai. China had indeed accumulated considerable experience in the development of military aircraft, but for such a large civilian aircraft project, everyone was new to it. At that time, large jetliners from European and American countries had been around for 15 years. Starting development with a prototype on the shoulders of giants was the wisest choice. However, due to technological blockades by Western countries, the only available prototypes in China were the Soviet Tu-104 and the British Trident jetliners. However, the Tu-104 had design flaws that China couldn't overcome. The Trident was a medium-haul jetliner and didn't meet China's requirements for long-distance flights. The most suitable prototype would have been the American Boeing 707, but at the time, China and the US had not yet established diplomatic relations, and Chinese designers hadn't even seen what the aircraft looked like. At a critical moment, Pakistan came to China's aid. In 1971, a Boeing 707 belonging to Pakistan International Airlines crashed. Pakistan directly sent the wreckage of the aircraft over. Although it was just wreckage, it was an invaluable opportunity for the Yun-10 design team. The designers were passionate and focused, even considering the cafeteria the best office, piecing together dining tables for desks, 
where they drew, held meetings, discussed, and ate, all to increase efficiency. After two years of repeated modifications and arguments, the model and design drawings of the Yun 10 were finally confirmed. There were hundreds of thousands of design drawings, enough to cover several football fields, embodying the efforts of over 500 researchers. In terms of design, aerodynamic layout, external appearance, and structure, they referenced the Boeing 707, incorporating comprehensive domestic optimizations after aggregating the best ideas from various sources. Many new technological concepts not only contributed to the Yun 10, but were also applied to subsequent military aircraft, such as the J 10, JH 7, Y 8, and YR 9, all benefiting from the Yun 10 project. After the Yun 10 design was completed in 1972, preparations continued for three years. The research and production of the Yun 10 began to accelerate in 1976, and by 1980, all simulated tests of the control, hydraulic fuel, and avionics systems were successfully completed. All was set, all that was needed was the east wind. On September 26, the aviation industry's decade-long effort bore fruit as the Yun-10 made its successful maiden flight. China became the fourth country after the United States, the Soviet Union, and France to construct large aircraft. After the maiden flight, it entered a long process of test flights. The Unit 10 flew to various cities such as Shanghai, Harbin, Uremi, and Chengdu. The route from Chengdu to Lhasa, approved for the Unit 10, was significant, considering the complex and ever-changing weather conditions along the way. The Unit 10 flew over the world's rooftop, the Himalayas, seven times, undergoing tests under various harsh weather conditions, both empty and fully loaded all of which were very satisfactory. Unfortunately, due to American schemes, the Swiss project ultimately failed and couldn't move towards mass production. As early as 1976, when the first prototype of the Swiss project completed static tests, the Americans began plotting. In 1978, McDonnell Douglas actively proposed cooperation, offering to develop international markets with China. They were willing to sell BC-type aircraft patent technology at a discount and even attach some advanced military equipment. In 1981, McDonnell Douglas painted an even larger picture, hoping to jointly develop advanced civilian airliners with China for international markets. They were willing to establish a joint venture with China, putting 25 MD-82 aircraft production orders in Shanghai. These aircraft would be exempt from technology transfer fees, with an additional 30% discount. To show sincerity, the Americans spared no expense. They directly airlifted several tons of various aircraft blueprint documents to the United States, and brought hundreds of Chinese technical personnel to the U.S. for training. Over 100 American experts were stationed in China to help introduce the McDonnell Douglas aircraft production line demonstrating sincere cooperation and benefits. With the cooperation agreement reached between China and the US, the Yun 10 domestically produced large aircraft project was completely terminated. The Yun 10 production line at the Shanghai Aircraft Manufacturing Company was dismantled, replaced by the MD-82 aircraft. According to China's cooperation plan at the time, the first step was to fully absorb MD-82 aircraft technology then improve and scale up from regional aircraft to trunk aircraft and finally achieve complete independent intellectual property rights for domestically produced large aircraft. At the time, all Chinese aviation personnel didn't know that using regional aircraft technology to lure China into abandoning independent research and development of large aircraft was America's true purpose and China was deceived by Americans. After Boeing swallowed McDonnell Douglas, the cooperation project was directly terminated. China only assembled two MD-82 aircraft. After investing countless funds and efforts, both the Yun-10 and MD-82 disappeared. China's civil aviation work suffered a heavy blow, and the platform for independent research and development of large aircraft vanished. China's civil aviation market of billions of dollars was monopolized by Western technology. The past serves as a lesson for the future. In the new era, 
China must develop its own land. Forty years after the disappearance of the Unit 10, also in Shanghai, the C919 finally emerged. Although not perfect, it is China's first domestically operated commercial airliner. Behind the C919 is a complete set of China's civil aviation industry chain. China is a large country with a population of 1.4 billion. Reliant solely on industries such as clothing, mobile phones, and automobiles cannot support the living standards of 1.4 billion people to enter the ranks of moderately developed countries. The C919 carries not only the dream of large aircraft, but also marks the beginning of China's civil aviation industry reaching the world's top level. Finally, let me summarize today's video, hoping it has inspired and provided value to you. As a seasoned blogger, I deeply understand the arduous journey of China's large aircraft project. From the Uni-10 to the C919, the development of China's aviation industry has been filled with challenges and struggles. Despite technological limitations and hindered cooperation, China's aviation engineers have continued to strive and explore, finally achieving a significant breakthrough in the C919 project. This achievement not only represents the rise of China's aviation industry but also embodies China's technological strength. However, China must not forget the lessons of history. In past attempts, China has suffered greatly due to technological blockades and betrayed cooperation. Behind this success is the relentless efforts of China's aviation industry personnel, and China's determination to pursue independent innovation. In the future, China needs to continue its efforts, continuously improve its technical level, maintain its ability for independent research and development to ensure the sustainable development of China's aviation industry. Finally, I'd like to ask, what does the success of China's large aircraft project mean for the future of China's aviation industry? How should China continue to promote the development of its aviation industry? I look forward to your thoughts and sharing in the comments section. Today's video ends here. See you next time with more exciting content. Goodbye. Goodbye.